Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is Claudio Burstein here from uh, Biams Headquarters, uh, and I'm welcoming you to Orino 1.1. Uh, I have in the agenda first a quick recap, if you want. Uh, so I'm just going to launch a poll right uh, in a minute. So if the majority wants a kind of like a quick recap of what is Orino and uh, kind of like setting setting up the the correct expectations, we can do that. If not, we can jump right up uh, to the improved installer. This is not uh, actually one of the improvements of Orino 1.1. It was actually released previously on 1.0.45, uh, but we thought that it would be it would be good to actually talk about it in a little bit more detail. Uh, then we're going to jump right into Orino 1.1, uh, the new features, uh, LDAP, uh, the no dialer room option, and notifications. So we're going to explore all those. So what is Orino and Orino pretty much as we learn is a control surface uh, that allows me to control the CR systems and it all starts with an integrator and an IT admin working together to install Orino on a PC running Windows and originally it was it was thought that this was going to be more like an IT product but it is a Biome branded product so we or integrators are going to be involved in the process of installing this, but this is going to be installed on a PC running Windows that belongs directly to the um, uh, to the customer. So this can be a joint effort uh, on how to install Torino, and uh, and and it depends a lot on where and how much access the integrator is going to have uh, to that PC that actually belongs to the. Uh, to the customer. Now when we install Orino, Orino doesn't install like a software like you would expect that will create an icon on your desktop that you can double click and it's going to launch an application. It is not an application. Actually Orino, uh, the Orino manager is actually a, a process if you will uh, that will install and actually generates three things. It actually creates websites the same way that, for instance, when you go to Google.com or you go to any particular or Biome.com, uh, that is actually a computer located somewhere that generates that website, that generates all the content for that website. So Orino Manager, that's what it does. It's running on the background of your computer and generates the Orino Admin, and that is the interface that the administrator is going to be able to look at and make adjustments, uh, add rooms, add users. Uh, get the user sign up to use particular rooms, et cetera, et cetera. And it's also going to generate the website that can be accessed by the end user. And this is, has a complete different layout, but in essence, it's being generated by this same tool. And this website pretty much uh, gives you all the controls. So these are active icons that when you touch, basically, we send that information to our Reno manager, and our Reno manager says, hey, hey, this user connected with this username and password uh, is trying to make a call that is referenced to a particular Tessera system. And on the background, we are running pretty much the Tessera software and we're talking to Tessera systems. And when I say we're talking to Tessera systems, it could be that we're talking to a single system that has multiple rooms or we're talking to multiple systems that have multiple rooms. So the concept of rooms in Tessera, that's in, in Orino, doesn't have to do anything with the number of systems. You could have 50 rooms in 50 systems, or you can have one system that has 50 rooms, or any combination in between. So you can have multiple Tessera systems that Orino talks to, uh, and, and basically the rooms that are configured within those systems. So that's what Orino Manager does. It kind of basically creates website, for the administrator, it creates the websites for the for the end user, and it talks on the background with our Tessera systems. So to install that, basically we configure IIS Web Server in Windows, and that is the tool in Windows that allows us a com that allows a computer to create a website, uh, and then we install Orino Manager. Uh, in that console that we install, the administrator then can enter the license for Orino because remember that the, the um, Orino uh, manager is actually something that we sell directly to the end user. They own Orino manager, so they will be able to enter the license for Orino manager and they will establish the admin user. And an admin user is any type of user that has complete access to the system. Not only they can use some of the rooms, but they can also log in into the admin console 
and add users, delete users, assign users to rooms, uh, add rooms, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they can they can do a lot of things with the with the system. And also, you can add designer and end users, and these are different type of users. Uh, end users is basically uh, end users that can log in and use the UI to control a particular system, while a designer is a particular user that the only thing that it can do is load a Orino design file into Orino Manager, basically what the end user is going to see. And then it will establish also the network parameters to connect with the CIA system. And this is pretty much establishing what are the network uh, interfaces that we're going to be using from that PC to talk to the Tessera systems and maybe we can even set the host, host names of those systems so we can uh, connect them directly. And this is very similar how we connect in the Tessera software to a particular Tessera system. Uh, once that is done, then we have the designer. And the designer could be someone directly, uh, it could be the end user, but most likely is going to be the integrator. And in, in the designer will run Orino Creator. And Orino Creator is not directly linked with managers. So you can have Creator installed on your PC uh, and not have any managers. And, uh, and pretty much you're only going to use it when you need to create the Orino user interface that is going to be loaded in a particular project. So in Orino Creator, you can create your rooms, you can export from Tessera and import into Orino to create that as that controls for each one of those rooms. And that's pretty much what you do in Orino Creator. So Orino Creator is an actual software. So when you install Orino Creator in your PC, yes, you're going to get your icon that if you double click, basically you open a, a piece of software in your PC. So that the Orino Creator, it, it's, it's more normal in, in a software from a software perspective. And then from Orino Creator, we can send to Orino Manager. And the way that we do that is using that designer account. So when we create a designer account in Orino, in the Orino Manager, in the Orino Admin Console, that allows somebody to log in from Orino Creator and send the Orino design file into Orino Manager. So an Orino Creator can talk to multiple managers. So when you're installing uh, or you sell uh, an Orino, uh, or, uh, you do an Orino deployment, you don't need necessarily to buy another Orino Creator. You already have Orino Creator, so you can create your rooms and then actually install them in that particular system. Once that is done and we have sent that Orino file directly to Creator, we can add users and assign roles. So we can manually add root users. Uh, and tell them, well, if they're going to be end users or how they're going to be using. And when I say assign roles, is well, are they going to be end users? Are they going to be admin? How are they going to be? And then we can assign users to rooms. So a particular user can have access to certain rooms and not others. Or maybe you want a group of people to be able to access one room and some other group of people uh, to another room. And actually, uh, it doesn't say here, but we can actually add users now using the LDAP functionality that we're going to talk about in, in a couple minutes. And then once we're done, we just enable manager. And when we enable manager, pretty much we open up the possibility of controlling our Tessera system. So now our end users can actually log in with a URL that is actually connecting to that PC so it get, to get to that, um, to that uh, website. So it's pretty much the same way as we go to any other website. So we just use a web browser. Uh, and that will open the control interface for a, uh, that allows us to control a particular room, and that will send messages back and forth and control our Tessera systems. While that is already working and everything is uh, deployed, the admin can log in at any time and can monitor the room usage or can terminate meetings. So, for instance, if there's a meeting and he wants to terminate the room because the room is needed for something else, he can do that, or he can monitor who is uh, using those rooms. So that's pretty much kind of like in a nutshell what is uh, Orena. Uh, so I'm going to continue now with the improved installer. Uh, some of you, many of you, or perhaps all of you, uh, went through the process of installing Orino 1.0. And Orino 1.0, uh, there was a big process to, installed, um, to install uh, Orino Manager. Uh, not only we needed to uh, in, install uh, IIS for Windows, but we needed to set up tasks and a whole bunch of stuff. 
So we develop a tool that simplifies the steps that are required to install Arduino. So now the only things that is needed is enable IIS in Windows, and this is because this is not something that can be automated, and then just run the Arduino installer. Once you run it, it will open up uh, a dialog, and it will pretty much ask you how do you want to work. Then you hit apply, you hit test to test that that, that is working the way that you want, and you're done. So all the steps that we had before that we needed to do are now gone. They're being taken care of of the new, uh, of the new installer. So that tool that is called Oreno Config is taking care of setting up and running the task in Task Scheduler, is starting the Oreno tray, is configuring IIS for Oreno, is setting up SSL if you're doing a secure connection for Oreno, is running the ASP.NET, uh, uh, and it's also changing the firewall settings. So it's pretty much doing, doing everything. Now, the cool thing about the Orino, um, Orino config tool is that if you need to make any changes in the future, uh, the only thing that you need to do is just run the Orino config tool to make those changes, and that's it. So you don't need to go in into any, any of these weird places and, and, and start uh, again from scratch. So I'm going to show you that, and actually in this PC that I am uh, that I'm working on, uh, I do have an older version of Arduino. I have Arduino 1.0. I actually have a link here. So I'm going to go here. This the PC that I am using right now is the app soup pc .com. and I have an Arduino here. And I'm just going to log in one second, so I can show you that uh, the version number. So it's connecting here. So I'm going to go here to about, and you can see here that the version is 1.0. So I'm going to update this this PC to do um, to do to 1.1, and we're going to be uh, checking this in just uh, in just a sec. So to do that, I'm going to actually I need to get out of here and change this a little bit. There we go. So now you should see some uh, icons on the screen. So the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to open my uh, control panel. And I'm going to uninstall a program. And I'm going to search here for my Orino. And there is my Orino manager. And you can see that the version that I have installed is 1.0.43.2. So I'm going to just hit uninstall and uninstall completely. Uh, now, I don't need to do uh, install the IIS because IIS was already turned on, but pretty much that's exactly as it was before. So just go through the list and, um, and uh, uh, pretty much check all the little checkboxes on the IIS, and that's pretty much all, all that, it's, uh, that is needed. So now Orino Manager has been uninstalled, so I'm going to close this. And I have here the, the, the installer for 1.1, 1, 1 1. so I'm just going to double click here and let it do its thing. You're going to see how, how easy that is. So it's extracting the file. Uh, me. So just go through the emotions. I'm going to say that this is the webinar room, and it's in BIAMP. So I am going to do the complete installation. All right, so once it's finished, it opens this dialog, and this is the Orino config tool. And here, there are three options that we can do to install Orino. We can actually test setting to control from this machine. So this allows me to only run it within the machine that I'm using. Uh, the basic configuration enables for remote or mobile access, so actually I can have external devices connect to it. And secure is only when we're using a secure certificate. So usually, and the best thing to do is always start with the first one, with the test. And here it's just asking me, well, what is the name of the computer that you want to do? And I am actually comes preloaded with localhost because, well, localhost resource directly to this, to this PC. So I can just here go here, apply. And this window appears. It's doing some stuff. I just let that run. So it's doing its thing. Then that closes. And then... When it, I get this Arena config, test configure was applied to Arena, I click OK. 
I click test and that will open a web browser and it will try to connect to Arduino with a local host and there it is. Uh, and actually when we update to the new version, uh, all the parameters and all the stuff that I have programmed is not lost. So I can still go in here and log in with my same credentials. All right, and I can see I'm, I'm logging, and if I go here to about, I can see that I have now version 1.1, and that's that's pretty much it. So I'm going to close here. I'm going to go back here. In the, um, if you then, if you want to move to kind of like uh, usually the most common scenario that you want other PCs to connect to this uh, to this PC or control stuff like that, then you would go to basic. And basic, it looks pretty similar. The only difference is that now we're not going to name this localhost. Here, we can either specify the IP address of the computer, and we would need to do this if there's no DNS server in the network that I'm connecting or the network that other devices are going to be using to connect to this PC, or I can actually use a um, uh, the name of the, of the computer if there's a DNS server and that can actually get here. So for instance, in my case, I can use here the name of this PC uh, and actually make it appsoup.pc.7.biamp.com. So in this case, uh, basically it will be connected, it, it is connected to the Biamp domain. So if I type here, I can actually get to this PC from anywhere in the network. So I just hit apply and when it's done, it's done, and then I can actually click test again, and it should pretty much load up again. There is a page, basically all it's set and done. So now it's very, very simple. Then when I'm done, I can just close that. Now, if I need to make any changes at any point uh, after it has been installed, I can just go to the start menu and type Orino, and you're gonna see that Orino config appears in the list. And if you click that, you can open the Orino config tool again and pretty much do any changes. For instance, let's say that you deploy it and you want it to do now uh, secure. So you can click secure and it's going to tell you, well, you're using this name for the machine. Now you need to provide what is the location of the SSL certificate, so where it is saved. You hit apply, it's pretty much done, and then you test and that's it. So we have simplified a lot the process of installing uh, of installing uh, Orino and made it a lot, lot easier. So let's move on now uh, to LDAP. What is LDAP? And probably you know some of this stuff and uh, the first couple of slides that I'm going to go through are just uh, conceptual stuff uh, that is good to know. Uh, not necessarily uh, stuff that we require when we are, when we are uh, uh, selling or presenting the product, but it's kind of like good, kind of like to know, kind of like a little bit of a background. So LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Uh, so it is not LDAP, there is a confusion out there that LDAP is a directory, and LDAP is not a directory. LDAP is the language that we use to connect to a directory and extract data from it. Uh, the confusion comes because, well, there are some directory services like OpenLDAP that is a directory service, but it has the LDAP name on it. So it's kind of like, well, there's kind of like a very blurred line between the two. But in any case, LDAP is a protocol that is open, architecture, vendor neutral, industry standard, uh, and basically allows us to access and maintain distributed directory information. Uh, that are based, based on an IP network. And probably this is something that you have used. For instance, if you're in a big corporation, it's very likely that when you log into your Windows PC, you have a username and password. And you might be using that username and password for other services that are also in, within your company. So for instance, here at Biamp, we use that, we use the same login to log into our email, to log in into our, to our CRM, uh, to log into the uh, Cornerstone site, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So all those are actually pointing to the same directory. So at the very basic level, LDAP allows us to save in a central place username and passwords. 
So when we need to do a validation, we go to the LDAP server and basically we say, oh, is this person validated? Is this the correct password? Yes, it is. Cool, et cetera. Now, LDAP doesn't allow me to ret retrieve a password or anything like that. It just does the validation. It says, hey, I'm getting this user signing up with this password. Uh, so is that correct? And allows to do some validation. So as I said, LDAP is what allows the connection to a directory server, but it's not the directory service in itself. Now, what is a, a directory? And actually, a directory is pretty much, it's a database. It's, in, in essence, it's pretty much a database. And it's a centralized and standardized system to kind of maintain user data, uh, security, and distributed resources. So it's pretty much a big database that has a lot, a lot of information. And directory services, there are many, many out there. Uh, for instance, uh, the most common ones are Active Directory uh, or Open LDAP. Uh, those are the most common use in the industry. So big companies like Google, Amazon, and stuff like that, they use either Open LDAP or Active Directory. But there are some others like Red Hat, Apache, OpenDS, IBM Tivoli, etc. And the interesting thing is that the way that they organize the data is in such way that the LDAP tool or the LDAP protocol can actually access the data from those directory services. Now, those directory services are object-oriented storage organizations, so they're based on membership. If you know a little bit of coding or programming, uh, object-oriented makes a lot of sense. So. Uh, that provides a way that we can do a hierarchical structure with a single point of access. So a directory service pretty much is something that conceptually might look something like this. So you have a company and then you have associates, computers and resources and within associates you might have a group that is finance and some people that belong to that group and some people that belong to marketing and some computers and equipment that belong to the computers group and some resources, et cetera, et cetera. So, and this can extend pretty wide. Now, the interesting thing is that you might think, okay, so there is a folder that is labeled company, and within that folder, there's three folders that are labeled associate computers and resources, and between and within the associate folder, and uh, there is a finance folder and a marketing, and it, it doesn't work like that. That is kind of like the menu structure that you would think of a, um, of files on your computer. But actually, since this is um, uh, object-based uh, or, or, or object-oriented, it's actually the reverse. So pretty much what we have is each, the, each endpoint or, or, or person or obje object, I'm calling an object a person, a computer, a printer, those are objects. Each object has a set of parameters or attributes. And those attributes actually assign membership. For instance, that person there, it has a name, that is John Doe, it has an email, it has a department, it has a phone number, it has a title. So instead of keeping all those folders, the company folder, the associate folder, etc., etc., what we have is a whole bunch of cards. And the protocol allows us to see, well, look for people that belong to the department marketing. And it will look for all the cards that actually have marketing in the department. And the interesting thing that is that we can actually parse through that data very, very quickly. So it is all based on membership. So anytime that we add an object to this tree, we, we make it a member of something else and that might be a member of something else inherently. So marketing department is actually inherent. Uh, it's a member of associate and associate is a member of company. So it's actually kind of like backwards of what we think when we're talking about object oriented. Now, there are multiple benefits about LDAP. Uh, if you're using LDAP, there's one directory for everything and everyone. So instead of having multiple uh, username and logins that you need to use to access different services in your corporation, you use only one single login uh, to access any or all the services in that. Not only that, um, when it comes to, um, uh, so the, for instance, the same way, for instance, we add a new printer here in the office. Instead of having to add new installers everywhere, pretty much you just click on a link with an LDAP server and the LDAP will give me all the information where that printer is and now 
we can say who can use that and you can create that role within the LDAP within the directory and now pretty much you have access to that printer. So Orino pretty much acts the same way. We can actually retrieve users from the LDA, uh, using LDAP uh, from the Active Directory and add those users automatically to Orino and actually even use that for the directory when we want to dial a phone number. So for instance, in your phone number, if you see the names of all the associates in the company, that is actually being pulled from a directory. So Orino will do pretty much the same thing. I'm, I'm going to show you that in just, in just a minute. Uh, it is very simple access to resources because basically since we have a single point of entry, we just need to point to where the directory service is and where we're going to start searching. So on that tree, we need to tell it where we're going to start searching and pretty much we will bring all the data into Orino. Uh, it is a policy-based management, and what that means is that you can create groups that have access to certain uh, resources and some other groups that have access to other resources. So making changes is actually uh, very easy, and for IT admins, it's actually easier for them to make those changes uh, on, the, on the directory service than actually going into an application like Orino or any other application for that matter to actually allow access to certain people or, or, or not. So they can actually create policies that actually apply to a complete group of people and that is much, much easier, much quicker to, uh, to deploy. Uh, it has added security because now you don't need to pass a piece of paper to the IT admin and say, hey, I need to add this user with this, uh, with this password or anything like that. Now basically they are added automatically and the IT admin or whoever has admin access to the Orino console doesn't see username or um, username or, or passwords or any information like that. Basically, that is based, integrated directly into Orino uh, and it's completely behind the scenes. There is no way from Orino to get those password information or that, uh, that information from, from the user, from the users. And, and there are multiple other benefits, but the most important one in the end is that Probably in most cases where we're going to be installing Orino, LDAP is something that is already there. It has already been implemented. So adding Orino functionality to, to uh, adding uh, LDAP functionality to Orino is as easy as turning it on and basically making the connection to the LDAP server. And we'll go do that uh, in the LDAP configuration. We're going to see that in just in just a second. So the only thing that we need to do is enable that. Once that, uh, we can select whether we want to use the LDAP data for the dialer contact list. So what this check mark does is if we, um, if we check it, uh, basically the speed dial or the, uh, the speed dial in the dialer block in Orino will only show the local speed dial that you have set in the dialer in your Tessera file. Uh, if you uncheck this, aside from the local phone numbers, it will add all the users from the LDAP service. Uh, then uh, we just, uh, the host name is pretty much the location of the LDAP directory and this is something that the IT manager will give you. The port uh, to use, uh, the port to access LDAP, it defaults to 389 which is the most common port unless you're using uh, security. Uh, but we have the capability of use data encryption with the LDAP. Uh, and then the B, um, base DN or base domain uh, distinguish name. And this is what specifies the point of entry from where the data is going to be searched. And we're going we're gonna to take a look. I'm going I'm to talk a little bit more in detail about the base DN to explain exactly what it is. But for an IT admin, this should be pretty simple and, and standard because they already use these, these type of tools for other services. So for instance, when they allow service to, let's say, a particular service or, or a server or a printer, they probably create a base DN like that that allows certain group to access that, um, that service. So that is, that's actually pretty common. And then we can, that we can select whether we're using anonymous authentication or simple authentication depending on how they're managing the directory service. And if we're using authentication, we need to provide the login, um, the login uh, credential. And the refresh LDAP uh, allows me to, if I turn it off, to clear the LDAP user list. So basically erases all the data 
that I have in Arduino. Now, the way that Arduino does this is that when you turn it on, it will pull the data and populate that, and that's it. So it doesn't have constant communication with the LDAP, and Arduino doesn't have the capability of modifying uh, information in the uh, in the directory. So it's only one way. We're only retrieving information from, from LDAP. So what is that base DN? Base DN stars, uh, uh, stands for uh, distinguished name, and that's what identifies a particular person within the tree. Uh, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute. That's going to make it a little bit more clear. But there are a couple of terms that we use whenever we're searching data within LDAP. Uh, we use DC. That's the domain component, and that refers to each component of the domain. For instance, biamp.com. Biamp is part of that domain. .com or com is part of that domain. So that is kind of like kind of like a very global, where am I going to be looking for that uh, directory? OU, organizational unit, is a unit or group that the user is part of. So for instance, I can say associates, or I can say finance, or I can say tech support. And common name is an individual object. So that's a person name, phone number, etc. So the common name is actually that kind of like contact card for one particular person within the organizational unit. So going back to the little diagram that I had before, my company, that is where the uh, directory is going to be located. So let's say that it's located at company.com. So I would need to start by placing DC equals company, DC equals com. So those are the two components of the directory, uh, of the directory component that I need to have to access that LDAP. Then, I said, let's say that I want to pull all the users from the associate uh, user group. So the organizational unit would be uh, people. Actually, it should read uh, associate here. So it would be OU equal associate, DC company, DC com. And that will pull all the users within that circle. But the interesting thing is that I can actually drill down a little bit. So for instance, uh, I could say computers and it would be exactly the same thing. But I could also drill down and say, for instance, I want just the people from the marketing department. And that will be OU marketing. So that's the organizational unit that is within the organizational unit people. Again, that should read associate, uh, my mistake, my typo. That is within DC company, DC com. So as you see, it's kind of like it's drilling down and it's actually giving me the point of entry from where we're going to start looking at data in the LDAP uh, service. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open here uh, me, uh, uh, oops, let me get out of here one second, and I am going to open my browser, and I am going to go, uh, use the Orino install that we have in our apps, uh, in our apps rack, so it's actually, I have a computer in um, my applications uh, on, our, uh, on our test rack where we have a whole bunch of uh, devices. We have a computer there that is called apps rack dash pc dash seven dot and there is my um, uh, my uh, my login. So I'm going to log in into this one, and and in this case, well, we see that I have a system here. Uh, I have three users, uh, and now there's a couple of changes in, in the dialog. For instance, if you look at this user, now you can see the user here, what's the email, when was created, and I can see here what rooms this user has access, uh, has access to. Uh, the same here, for instance, I can see David, what's the email, and what rooms he has access to. So there's a couple of changes on, on how we laid out this, uh, this dialog. So at this moment, I don't have LDAP turned on, uh, so I'm not using uh, any of the LDAP users. But I can go here uh, where it says LDAP, just click here, and that brings the LDAP, LDAP configuration, and that will allow me to enter uh, the information from the LDAP. And we do have an LDAP test server, and I'm going to add that, so I'm going to turn this on. The host name, and actually I was given this, is LDAP. Uh, demo.biam.com. So the port is the default 389. And then the base DN 
Uh, I'm going to start with the one that it gave me, but then I'm going to show you a couple of interesting things with this. It's going to be OU. It's going to be uh, BSI users. Uh, uh, the DC, the domain component, is going to be BSI Orino LDAP. And domain component is going to be demo. And is this one uses simple authentication and is Orino admin at BSI Orino LDAP dot demo. And the password is a secret password. Uh, all right, so I'm going to hit apply. And now you can see that my user list changed a little bit because it extracted a whole bunch of groups. And you can see that this is Project Hector. It's our organizational unit. That's our OU. Uh, Project Horus, organizational unit. So these are all pulled directly from LDAP. If I double click here, I actually get all the users that are belong to Project Hector. And I can see, for instance, this guy, his name is uh, Brandon Zwickel, and uh, there is uh, the email, the title, the organization, uh, rooms, and uh, what is the, um, the common name and where it, where it was pulled from. So there's multiple users, and even the picture is pulled from the LDAP server. So if the LDAP server has pictures, well, you get all the pictures and everything directly here. And if I scroll down, I can see that I also I have groups. So for instance, within an organizational group, uh, organizational unit, you can have groups. And if I double click here again, it goes under again, and you can see all the people that belong to Project Hector Administrative. So I can see all those users here. So the same thing that I can do with other users, from this window, I can, in instance, grab this user, click Rooms, and tell it, OK, you can use the rogue conference room, for instance, and I have assigned that user to that particular room. Uh, if we want to add uh, the, the entire group, that's a little bit different. Uh, uh, so that actually has to be done in the rooms. Now from here, I can go all the way up one level by clicking this up arrow, uh, or I can click the home and it takes me completely back to, uh, to the beginning. All right, and here on the right hand side, I can actually filter which users I want to see in this list. So I can see only the LDAP users, only the local users, all or all the users. When we are assigning rooms, we can actually assign also complete groups. For instance, I can grab this entire group and tell it I want this group to be able to use the rogue conference room. Uh, oops, no, I have to open the group. So you open the group, and now you can actually, you have all the users from this group. I can add all these users to the row conference room. So I just click this arrow, and it's going to add all the users, individual users, directly uh, to, this, uh, to this room. So all of them could use that room. Now, <coughs> excuse me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new tab. I'm going to go to the UI, and I'm going to click here. Uh, one of my um, uh, one of my uh, logins, and I see here that I have both both of those rooms. And I, if I go here, for instance, to the rogue room, uh, and I click dialer because I want to dial, I can see that I have some uh, some people in this directory that actually are programmed in my Tessera file. The biome system CEO, important person, Darth Vader. Uh, but then I have Project Hector, Project Horus, Project Menace. These are actually pulled directly from LDAP. So right here, I can double click here. Uh, oops, come on, it should, oh, where is it not doing? Ah, it should open up the, um, the, individual, the individual users. I don't know why it's not doing it. Uh, let me go back here to status, LDAP. Yeah, well, it should have, oh, it's because there's no individual individual users, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is that, let's say for instance, in this case, that I only want people from Project Hector 
in this LDA, in this uh, Orino deployment. I don't want Project Horus, Menace, any other people. I just want the people from Project Hector. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back here to LDAP, and what I'm going to do is just add OU equal Project Hector. Okay, so I just added an organizational unit that is called Project Hector. When I hit Apply, now I can see I only get the users from Project Hector. All the other ones just disappear. So the advantage of that is that if you're doing a deployment in Arena, you can actually create a group, and actually this is something very, very uh, easy to do from the IT, IT admin. So in our case, basically we say, okay, which group is the one that has access to Norino? And there you go, pretty much is all is all done uh, is all done automatically when we set the uh, what are the filters. If we didn't put any of these filters, for instance, if I take these both these organizational units out and I run it just with the DC, you're going to see that it actually brings the entire BSI users group. So you can see that it's actually telling where I am starting to look for users in um, in uh, in Orino. All right. Um, what else? Uh, so, for instance, let me go back here to LDAP and let me put back my two uh, organizational units. I'm going to apply that. So now I have all those users. So if I do this and I now uh, and I go back here and let's see, it should have updated my um, my dialer list. So I can hear the I can see here that I have now all the users from Project Hector. They have been added directly to my list. So for instance, if I want to call somebody from Project Hector, I just select that person and there's a number. I click uh, click the number and click call and that's pretty much it. So that is the advantage of using LDAP. So LDAP can work in Orino for two things. It can work to allow adding users to the admin console and also to add the users to, um, to the dialer uh, within the Oreno UI. If we, we don't want the users in the Oreno UI, let's say that we want uh, to use rooms that are going to be calling outside, they're not going to be calling inside the company, we can exclude LDAP users from the contact list. And if I do that, now when I go here to my dialer, I'm going to see that it only pulls the local contacts that are programmed in the dialer in my Tessera file. All right. Excellent. All right. Uh, now, the other thing that we added in, uh, in Orino 1.1 uh, 1. 1 is the no dialer room option. You might recall that one of the requirements uh, to build an Orino layout was that each room needed to have a dialer. So the premise was you're going to be using Orino only on conferencing rooms. But what if you want a room that doesn't have a dialer? So we added the capability to add a room without a dialer and pretty much we take the widget out. So now we can use Orino for rooms that are not used for distant conferencing or maybe we use them for like uh, video conferencing or we use them for uh, presentations or other applications. So in this case, the dialer widget is completely removed from the, um, uh, is completely removed from the UI. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back here and I do have uh, a Tessera file, the one that I'm controlling with my Orino, the one, those two rooms, the, um, actually let me go first to, uh, it's not this one, uh, the other one. So in this, uh, I have two rooms. I have the Rogue Conference Room and the Columbia Conference Room, and this is controlling a Tessera, uh, uh, the Oreno two room, uh, the Oreno two room demo uh, file from Tessera. And actually, I can connect to that system using my Tessera software. Um, so these are all the systems that I have in my rack. There's a system, so I'm going to connect to it. 
And you can see here's the Rogue Conference Room, the Columbia Conference Room, and this is programmed on a Tessera Forte VI. I modified a little bit this file and I created a third room that is called the Willamette Conference Room. And you can see that we're getting some microphones that are coming all the way from the AC, pre-AC uh, actually. It has a gating automatic mixer, has some uh, level controls, a matrix mixer, parametric EQ, the uh, volume and then goes to Willamette out to the outputs and is wired directly to the output block. So it's a little room that has uh, four microphones and uh, two outputs, but there is no conferencing. So I'm going to add this room to my Orino file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just disconnect from here and I'm going to go to File, Export, Export Layout for Orino. And I'm going to save this in my uh, desktop. And so I'm going to call this uh, Extracted File for Orino. I'm going to save that and then I am just going to close this and I need to look for my file. Uh, it's, uh, it's right there. Oops. Uh, oops, where is it? Come on. Here we go. Okay, here it is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my creator and uh, I need uh, you know, in Orino, if I want to add a room to an existing system, I need to first extract that system from the um, uh, from Orino Manager. Uh, and so, what I'm going to do is that this is Orino Creator is actually installing this computer. I need to tell it that it's going to talk to the uh, to the um, to the computer in abstract. So, I'm going to go here to uh, Edit Preferences, and I want to tell it that my um, my uh, Orino manager is in apps rack does pc does seven dot biom dot com. So I'm gonna click OK, and the way to extract is that you click the send the sign file, and that is gonna ask you to save. I'm gonna say this untitled, uh, and then it's asking me for username and password. So for that one, uh, is so I enter my designer credentials for my Orino admin and it's talking to Orino manager and there is the system uh, and I can actually select this system and get the sign file and I'm going to save this on the desktop. I'm going to call it two room demo. All right. And then I'm going to close this and this save this in my uh, in my um, on my desktop, so now I can open that file uh, in the desktop. There it is, the two room demo. I'm going to open that, and there is the file that I just extracted from Orino Admin, uh, the one that is running on the on the rack. And I can see here that I have well my Columbia conference room, my Rock conference room, and I want to add that Willamette conference room into the system. Now the thing here is that the control data that I have here is the control data that I had extracted when I first created the file. So if I look through here, there is nothing for the Willamette system. So what I need to do is that I need to import this data again, and I, it's the data that I just exported from, uh, from Tessera a moment ago. So I'm going to go here to uh, File, Import. And I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to click Extracted Flame for Orino. That's the one that I just saved. And pretty much it changed the control data. So now I have the data that I need here. So actually, if I look, probably there's going to be some Willamette stuff here. I'm going to look for it and, and filter. But for instance, there was there's, there's some Willamette controls right there. So I have the controls that I, that I need. So to create another room, uh, I can go to the rooms uh, to the rooms here and add a new room here, or I can just go to rooms and add room directly um, directly from uh, from here. Uh, so I'm going to add the Willamette. Uh, all right. I'm going to go here, and in this room, I am going to check where it says here, use dialer. I'm going to uncheck that. So now it says no dialer. 
So when I click recommended, it opens the same dialog, but you see that this has been moved and now the dollar portion is not here. So I can now assign my controls here the way, the way, the, uh, the same way that we were doing before. The only difference is that I don't need to assign uh, controls that, uh, I don't need to assign the controls that are, that are not, uh, that are for a dialer or something like that that I'm not going to be using. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to filter this a little bit and I want, uh, uh, so I have certain levels. So I'm just going to put just simple levels. So this is going to be my room level, um, uh, room output level. So there is the mute. Uh, so I'm going to put this one right here, and the output level, I'm going to put it right here. And then I'm going to click microphones, and microphone levels, uh, I believe I have, um, uh, I can grab any of the microphone levels that I have here. So I'm going to grab, for instance, this mic level, mute, I drag it, and this mic level here, drag it, oops, uh, no, that's a mute, it's this one right here. All right, so I have uh, I have certain controls. Uh, if I wanted to add more controls, I can still add kind of like more microphones or faders and things like that for 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 this room. For instance, for these microphones, I could say I want to add uh, microphone one, and I want to add microphone two, and then uh, I can just go here and that adds those two faders, and then I can, for instance, add more controls. Here, so for instance, I can grab uh, this mute here, this mute here, uh, this level here, this level here, and I believe that I have also meters. So I can filter uh, audio meters. Uh, And there's a couple of meters there, so I can actually put my meters here as well. So I can do that. So now I can control. I'm going to, I'm going to have a sub dialog that allows me to control the mic microphone levels for these uh, for these rooms. So once I'm done, I could try to assign. It's going to ask me if I want to save it. I enter my um, my credentials again. So it's talking to manager, there's a room, so I just uh, assign the system to here or in a two room. Assign that, so now all three are assigned to the same, uh, to the same TCR system. I click OK, and I send that file. It's checking, everything is OK. Uh, I cannot send because I'm, on, on, I'm online, so I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to turn it off. One second, I go back to here, and now I can send my file. So it's sending that file from Orino Manager to the um, uh, to the uh, sending from Creator to Manager. It's done. So I can close here. I'm going to minimize this. So I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to go here to Users, and I'm going to look for. Uh, uh, local users, David, and I'm going to assign that room to me as well. You see that I now have the Willamette room is now here populated, and also I can see that that room has been added. So I just added uh, to me, to David, uh, I just added the ability to go to actually use that room. So now I can go back here, and I can log in with that credentials, and I can see that I have the three rooms. If I check this room, I can start my meeting. And this one has exactly the same controls. It works exactly the same way. I can mute signals, control volumes. I can control volumes. I can mute signals. Or if I click here, I can control my volumes. I can see meters moving, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it works exactly the same way. The only difference is that, well, there is no dialer. And that, you can do it on a per room basis. Because if we go back here to the Rogue Conference Room, the Rogue Conference Room still has it's dialer, okay? So that's that's what changed. So now we have the capability of making uh, interfaces without a, without a dialer. Uh, the other thing that we added is notifications uh, in the UI. 
so now when you do certain things or certain, certain things happen in the systems, we can actually display critical errors, warnings, and confirmations directly on the UI for the end user. Uh, so for instance, if we're going to turn the, uh, the UI off or uh, if we lock the room or something like that, we can, we can actually uh, see those notifications directly on the UI. So I'm going to go back here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to close this window and I'm going to move this one to the left. Uh, oops. And I want a new window. And then this one, I'm going to move it to the right. So basically, I'm going to keep uh, Orino admin on one side, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to do Orino, uh, the UI on the second side here. And I'm going to log in again as, um, oops, uh, and meeting. I'm going to log in here on the uh, Willamette one second. All right, so I'm using the Willamette, and there is kind of like a notification here. If I press here, it says fail to end call for participant. Okay, I can clear that. It's probably because I, the call was already ended and he was uh, thinking that it had not. So for instance, I am using the Willamette room. I can actually lock this room and let's say that I want to lock it for one hour. I get a notification that I did lock this room. If I unlock this room, I get a notification that the room has been unlocked. If for instance here in the admin, I say, well, I'm going to turn this off and I said delay for 30 seconds as a warning. The server will end offline in, in 30 seconds. Uh, so I cancel it and I say, well, the shadow has been canceled by the system will remain online. So I can get all those notifications and I can clear the notifications one by one or I can just click the clear all and it will clear all the notifications. So now when things are happening that relate or my impact, my usage of the system, uh, I will get a notification directly on the Oreno UI. All right, that it is for me. So those are the new things that we added in Orino 1.1. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time.